Let me start off with, uh, again, we saw tech in the US session taking a pretty decent hit overnight. When do we actually see, I guess, a rotation into value or does that necessarily not equate? If we see a decline in tech, is it just that investors are feeling the jitters going into the elections, going into uncertainty when it comes to a vaccine? The Fed doesn't look like it's necessarily going to offer much more and we're seeing more cash on the sidelines. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a signal for rotation into value at all, because I think uh, it's now a broad consensus that this pandemic is going on for one to two more years. So the tech story has long, long legs. If you're a technical trader and you're worried about getting toppy, this wasn't a bad place to exit. Take your chips off the table, because certainly there's a very good chance of some sort of a market, further market dip between now and the election. And you can jump back in at a lower price. So I, I really think it was something as simple as that. There's nothing fundamental that shifted in the tech story. In fact, it's only getting stronger. I think Powell's move today affirms the fact that even the Fed acknowledges with all of their economic might and analysis power that uh, this is the pandem pandemic is going to continue to drive the economy and how uh, countries cope with it and how they recover. So the tech story has long legs. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it as a value signal. Just that level of uncertainty that was really conveyed in what Jay Powell said overnight, right? So in that sense, do you then turn your attention away from... We were just literally in the last couple of minutes talking about US exceptionalism still prevailing. Do you agree with that, though? Or in the light of the uncertainty over the virus handling, over the vaccine timeline, do you look more to Asia, where across some of these economies you have seen the virus situation being handled better than elsewhere? Absolutely. I think Asia is definitely an interesting market for growth. I'd much rather go into Asian growth than U.S. value by a, by a mile. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things happening in Asia. Uh, tech is much more accepted by the consumer. It's much more an integrated part of life. Uh, this transition or period where we have to work mostly at home and remain distanced from each other has more accepted on a national level in Asian countries. And, uh, and for that reason, I think that they'll do extremely well during this period, where the U.S., unfortunately, will probably continue to have struggles to get the citizens to wear a mask. It's, it's unbelievable to the rest of the world, but that is the case here. It's really true. And it seems those new economy plays across Asia are doing very well, but they seem to be very much focused on what's happening in China, especially with the likes of Alibaba, Tencent and so forth. And the rest of the Northeast Asian markets or Southeast Asian markets, do they have their own big giants, tech giants and new economy giants that could actually uh, get support and who, that could actually really provide some value for investors? Well, I think that as an investor, you you know, frankly, we it's good to play the region. And, I mean, a good example of what's going on, for example, is with the Singapore government's partnership now with uh, Apple to pay their citizens to be healthy via this Lumi Health app that they're creating. And if that app does well in Singapore, that will spread out over the entire region. And we'll, there will be lots of opportunities for growth just coming out of um, an effort like that. And there may be homegrown copies of this or iterations of this will, that will benefit local companies. So I think we're just on the edge of things getting even more tech-focused. And I think every country will have solutions that are very particular for itself, but will also benefit from the regional changes uh, and the way tech is rolled out all over the region. We have central bank decisions across Asia today, but the expectation right now is that monetary policy support has been enough so far, at least until they sort of gauge how much has been done already. Will this sort of tapering out of monetary policy and even uh, tightening of fiscal measures as well have an impact on the markets? Oh, definitely. I don't think the world is ready for a tightening of fiscal support. I think that the world still needs fiscal support because we're still playing whack-a-mole with this virus. Yes, people have a little bit under control, but you're seeing everywhere that a country tries to reopen or, for example, open international travel, the virus spikes up. So until there is a truly widely accepted and globally standard protocol treatment and vaccination, which could be at least two years, maybe three, um, you're going to continue to have this up and down. So uh, as much as people are talking about tightening, I don't think it's going to happen yet. Uh, definitely not. It, I, I don't think they'll be able to. It's, it's a great idea, but uh, we're not there yet. Everybody needs support to get through this period.